Hey everybody, it's Jeff from Jeff's Vegetable Gardening and Containers on YouTube and our other channels. I want to do a few things today and I want to show you the garden a little bit where the progress is right now. Uh, first I got done my, I do this every two weeks fertilizing in the, in the uh, uh, every two weeks in the summer. The blood meal and the bone meal I'll do each once more, maybe halfway through the summer, but that's it. I'm not really using that anymore. What I use is, this is for the fruit. I mix it in with a water. It's a uh, fruit tree fertilizer. Dr. Earth, it works real good with like the peach trees, the blueberries, strawberries, and stuff like that. And the main two things I use in my garden for vegetables and everything is this Alaska fish plant food. It's a 511, which is high in nitrogen, which I really don't need right now because everything's so green and you really need the potassium and the, everything else in it and the calcium. So what I put in with it is this 463 here. And it's a... Uh, uh, homegrown Dr. Earth 463. So it evens it all kind of out a little bit, but uh, my next feeding, which will be in another two weeks from now, uh, it will be, um, I'll be dropping the nitrogen down even lesser, the nitrogen down, because the nitrogen keeps it green and everything, but right now everything's so green you want it to actually fruit, flower, and start doing that stuff. And we are getting there, which I'm going to show you in a, few, in a few minutes when we get back here. Now, when I do this, and I mix the uh, 463 in, in the, uh, in the uh, fish soluble fertilizer together. I use two and a half tablespoons for a uh, two gallon bucket. And I use three capfuls of uh, the Alaskan, or Alaska, sorry, uh, fish uh, plant food. So, Mix that all up through two gallons, and then I go through everything from my the peach tree. Like I said, I use two teaspoons per two gallons. That's just for the fruit stuff, but everything else, which is vegetable and all that, I use the uh, four six three and a five one one fish plant food and the homegrown uh, powder. Mix it all together in water, mix it up real good, and don't pour it on the leaves. You want to keep it off the leaves and off the plant itself as much as possible. Hold on a sec. So I had to get a drink. So, yeah, you want to keep it off as much as you want to do it in just the dirt. So we watered here. Oh, let me take it back here and show you the garden. Just want to show you how nice this. Uh, I didn't I put more out in my garden this year and didn't move much around the yard as much, but it's early yet, people. You know me. It'll, you can see how that uh, peach tree is doing right now. It's looking real good with peaches going on it and everything. Uh, and I just fertilized this one, plus it had a heavy water in about two days ago. But the peaches that were on here, see one laying on the ground over there. Generally, for the first two or three years, you might get some small ones, but it'll take a while to get the peaches you'll want on there. And plus, when it's a new tree like that, the uh, squirrels and the birds go after it. Uh, the peonies look real good. The flowers there. The flowers are going away. It seems like they do better in real hot weather. Uh, for flowering and doing stuff. Uh, the grass, as you can see, is... I don't think we've had... If you look up in the sky here, it's kind of looking like rain tonight, which is like a miracle around here, because I don't think we've had any amazing rain since... Um, maybe first week of May. That was just a light storm. Uh, I think mid-April that we had something decent in rain. Uh, and front yards, burnt. most of this is all, it looks uh, not too bad right now, but when the sun's out, it just looks like yellow burnt everywhere. Everybody's yards is hurting real bad. And you can see everywhere, it's just, the, the yards out there, they look so good, just aren't looking too good right now. Not sure what I'm going to do there, but I'm going to do some hanging stuff off there. I had to get this other stuff done. Fruit trees are all, this blueberry's struggling a little bit over here. Not too, too uh, nervous about it. I can see how it comes back after I just fertilize it. Raspberry and the rest of the blueberries. I've been eating blueberries off here. <coughs> excuse me. Every day. So. <coughs> excuse me. So. And the strawberries over there. We were in here last night. Me and my wife. I got two big 20 gallon containers of them in here. And we are just. We can't walk by them without eating them. I'll have to pick one here in a minute. Uh, you can see I got to pick that broccoli there. That one's due. The kale's already back. Spinach and lettuces. They're doing okay. Zucchini and squash. They're coming up. Everything here I just fertilized. Got a couple beans I got to plant. Potatoes, you can see them flowering right there. Those potatoes are up right there. Um, 
the uh, garlic doesn't look great in that bucket, but that's just the way it is because it's been in there so long. These are potatoes here too. One takes a little longer to come up. That's a bucket of sweets I threw in here. That's another bucket of potatoes. Look at that kale. I mean, geez, cauliflower coming up now. So we got a good round of cauliflower coming up here. So I got to get that one off because that one's starting to get a little discolored there. But I'm trying to hold off tonight and see if this fresh rain might come in a little bit. This is the, uh, look at these things here. There's a ton of them in here. Oh my. Uh. Can't walk by without eating them. All right, I put this little trellis in. The other day, you can see the tubing going there. They each got their own individual drip nozzle or spray nozzle on. And I did that with the whole garden here. So, except for the 20 gallon containers, I just used the black uh, soaker hose I've had for years. Now, this one here is just for cantaloupe and watermelon. And I got three watermelon plants and two cantaloupe plants there. So, I'm going to wind it all around that fence as it gets growing a little bit bigger here and wrap it on everything. We'll see how it goes, but it should take over this whole area. I think I just used the smaller, like crimson water mounds and stuff. I hope not to use the big ones or have to change my design. Look at that corn. That corn is three foot tall now. I feel the rain. Oh, my God. That is three foot tall now, and it's growing great. You can see there's another two more barrels of it back there. So we're doing good. This trellis here that I have in the middle, I'm touching. This is nothing but tomatoes, and I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine buckets of tomatoes right there. Just on this, and then when they come up, I can keep them tied to this because tomato bushes will get eight, nine foot tall sometimes, and they just they get a little outrageous. Uh, the zucchini and squash and here is looking good. I had a couple growing on here, um, but this one's been struggling a little bit in the sun. I can't figure this one out, but it, it's back up right now looking right. But today, when I come back, it wouldn't look too good. Another uh, type of that's a striped zucchini there, and I got another squash right there. Uh, green beans right there, back in that corner, potatoes. Now this is a cantaloupe here, another cantaloupe, and this is a, uh, I believe that's a melon. It's a melon, so you kind of run out of room pretty quick. Um, you can see the peppers. Now this here is spaghetti squash, green beans. Oh boy, maybe that's a spaghetti squash. Can't remember, i got to get them switched up. That's another type of bean, like a purple bean. And this is some more um, uh, type of uh, zucchini squash here. That's a pepper, 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 pepper. And if you look down there, now there's a hose going to each bucket. They're wrapped throughout that caging there. And each hose comes back to that green thing right there, which is a distributor. And that distributor that has a hose coming over here to that manifold I have right there. That manifold comes from a hose from the house with a timer on all the way out to here, the green one. And it feeds through all those different hoses out to, let me count, one, two, three, four, five, hold on, one, two, three, four, five, yeah, six watering systems. So I have six watering systems out here to take care of all I have going on here. And these are individual, you can see the red and the blue on them, you can adjust them. So each one now has an individual. i got to adjust the spray nozzles on them a little bit. And since it looks like rain tonight, I'm not going to water. You can see the uh, both eggplants are doing pretty good right there. That tomato bush is really taking off. And it's got some, um, oh, that's not, uh, I can't think of the name of it right now. My wife asked me to do it all the time. I can't think of the name. More strawberries. If you look down there along the edge, you'll see how red they are. There's more of them growing down there, so i got to get in here. and I, I haven't even really had a chance to look at anything too well. Another potato next to that one there, and that's a sweet potato. You can see all the sweet potatoes starting to grow now. They don't look like much, but trust me, in another four to six months, you'll be saying, holy crap, they took over the yard. So that's the way it goes. And I have to move this. Uh, you can see these hanging around, so i got to move this on the other side of this here to get it growing. Uh, that's my cucumbers, and they're going crazy, and I just fertilize those to make them flowering. They're growing up more and more and more. Sometimes you have to come on out here and feed them a little bit and get them up on the trellis a little bit. Of course, these are these two over here are going just a little bit slower, but they're really starting to uh, get into their groove now and grow up. Um, 
not too happy that fertilizer is on those leaves. But, but yeah, can't win at everything, and it's going to rain, so I hope it'll wash it off. Hope we get enough rain to wash it off. But you can see a watering system on all these individual buckets in here, and in here, and there's another one of green things that feeds you. Plug here and feed it all out through the hose. Watering systems. Uh, working in here with a hundred some potted plants and uh, putting this trellis up, moving everything back and forth, and putting this hose in and tie tying it everywhere. And I don't have all the edges of the wrap ties cut yet. Superior, superior pain in the butt. But when you see the product as it's working and getting done, then you're a little happy. You see those potatoes doing great in there. They got maybe three weeks to a month left and they'll start dying back. And when they start dying back, then the peppers will start coming up from underneath, which will be great for July and August. They're, they're still growing in there. They're just not getting as much sun as they need to. But we'll, that'll be fine. And they're all built, so they'll come back just fine. This pepper's looking real good here. Um, the one over here I was going to show you. If I, I walked by it earlier. I thought I saw. Yeah, see the bell on that one already growing? That little tiny plant already got a bell on the where it's starting to grow. There's a bell on that one over there. So peppers are way ahead there. That's normally a late July, early August thing. So each year is a little bit of a challenge and a different. The cilantro, basil, and uh, mint's doing good. Um, the dill is doing good. That's basil. That's what it was over there. I'm sorry. In that bucket I was telling you next to that tomato plant. So everything is really, if you look through here, everything's green and just going crazy. Uh, still not to the jungle point yet because the jungle point hits when you get a consistent 80 degrees to 90, 95 every day. Heat's on and all that kind of stuff. That's when a lot of these bigger vegetables and a lot of things really start. It hurts the small ones and different types get hurt with hotter weather. Certain ones do better. But right now you can see just looking at the garden here, I mean, everything is just lush and green. Except for the garlic, but that's been lush and green for a while. Just looking real good. It's just uh, it's in that area of ready to just go crazy and splurt. But all the flowers are coming out on everything now, and tomatoes and potatoes and everything you think of. And you can see here the sweet potatoes. They were just little shriggly things are starting to come up. You see that strawberries in there are starting to come up real good. I'm not sure what happened to that kiwi, but uh, that's why I moved it over here. You can see them sweet potatoes starting to fill in the buckets there now. These are all the home slips that. I go here and you can see these now. They just have one little slip coming out of each one of them. You can see them starting to grow up now. And really, we've only had maybe, I know a lot of people that don't like hot weather, they always say this, oh my God, it's hot this summer. Oh, they don't know what hot is. Um, so we might have had, I mean, hot days, maybe two or three. Warm days, probably 10. But nowhere near what, when we get into real hot weather, that's when your garden really kicks really kicks it for most of this stuff so see the wind starting to kick up here it's been a little rainy storms coming in yeah hey not a little pissed off i just got done fertilizing the garden and now it's going to rain and wash half of it out or more of it but oh well i got some fertilizer in there after getting the watering system up and then we'll hopefully it rains tonight and then i won't have to water for another three or four days depending on how hot it gets and then we'll be uh ready to just keep rocking and rolling now that i got the watering systems in and I can I can do so much more with it now. I'm just so much happier happier with the way things are going. So it just takes to get to that point of where two or three days ago I was disgusted. It was just too much to keep up with and get done. And uh, don't look like much, but it is. It's 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 a nightmare. But now I'm to the point where I feel better with it, and I'm to a point where I want to be with it. So I'm gonna leave you there, guys. We will be back in a another week or so because i got to go over uh, how to fertilize some of these things, self-pollinate them, excuse me, with the flowers and how to do that as you're going along. But right now we're in real good shape. We'll probably see you sometimes this week or whatever. I uh, haven't been out there for nine, ten days, but just been too busy getting everything ready, but you can see why. It's really prospering good right now. Uh, I think the only other thing we might do is go out here on a Go back here now, and I put those, I um, can't remember what them things are called now. Old age kicking in again, but the trees are normally grown in California. I told you last year I planted them in a video. I put 10 of them in, all 10 of them came back. Uh, giants quiz. 
Well, you see they're little right now because they're babies. But see that one's growing like compared to the little stump that was there. And to show you a couple of these, you can see that one. That one's starting to go crazy. So it's just a matter of, like I told you before, when you're doing bushes and trees, this one's really kicking there. Some of them are smaller, depending on if they're direct sun or got a little shade to them. Um, but they're really kicking up and doing good. But with trees and bushes, uh, they're not going to show much growth until the roots get down in the ground. Normally that's a year or two for them roots to get down. Once the roots get down, they start establishing the base, getting the minerals and everything they need out of the soil. That's when the trees and bushes will stop growing. So when they don't look big and they ain't growing too much right away, calm down. They'll, they'll be there. And sometimes they'll die in a hot summer. Just don't dig them up and give them a little time, especially if they're in the ground. In pots, you got to keep water. That's the difference. You see here, everything's above ground here, so it has to be water and kept up within the ground. You don't need this water as much. But in the ground, you're not trying to grow. I'm not saying it, but in my garden or in most gardens anymore, they're not trying to grow in the ground unless you have real good soil. And if you are an above ground garden, containers like I have or um, big grow spaces and all that, that's it. Oh, everybody will tell you there's, unless you're doing potatoes, just potatoes only, which potatoes don't need uh, that much water to them. They need some, but nothing like this other stuff. Uh, it's a matter of fertilizing and keeping up with the water. And, you know, you, mi you miss one, two watering because you're busy or some fertilizing stuff, you would just uh, pay for it dearly in the long run. All right, guys, it's starting to come down here pretty good. I'm pretty sick. We're getting some rain. So i got to clean up and shed everything off. Got to get all them bags of soil to put away and everything. All right, guys, like I told you, uh, good to be back on after a couple of weeks. Um, and let me uh, get off here tonight, and I'll be back in a couple of days go over some uh, pollinating stuff with some of the uh, different flowers and stuff and how you have to do them on the vegetables in the garden. All right, guys, don't forget about the Jeff Vegetable Gardening Containers on YouTube, Jeff Gardening on Facebook. Uh, Jeff Gardner Tips, I'm sorry, on Instagram. It's Jeff Gardner, I believe. And uh, right on Twitter at Jeff Vegetables. All right, guys, have a great night. See you.